Alright folks, here we go. We got Sadie here. She's a rescue pet. It uh, was uh, passed into different uh, hands in a family. I, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Say, she's a super cute Shih Tzu. I don't know really what I want to do. I'm going to play it, but she's got this main thing going on. And then uh, I know we want to tie, do it maybe half off everything. So, uh, And then I know the ears are hanging too low and they're matted actually. So I don't know how this ear thing is going to go, but... We definitely want to have him up. She said they're getting in the water bowl. And then this is uh, maybe a good opportunity for me to get the scaredy cut out there to show you guys how to use that. Those of you who have your, um, do your grooming at home. Uh, and we're going to go because me and mom were chit-chatting. Me and grandma were chit-chatting for just a few minutes. And some of my favorite clients, they're out of, they come from New York and they live here in Texas now. And just that no emotion, this is how it is kind of attitude. And it's, it's just refreshing because we uh, seem to tie up our emotions in everything we do. Um, instead of just saying how it is, you know, if you don't like something, just say it. And then uh, someone will fix it, right? Rather than going, wow, you don't like that. I'm so offended. You know, like, don't be offended by things. Just let them roll off you. If someone says, I don't like that, then great. What do you like? Do you want, I don't want a donut. I want to, okay, well, what do you want? You know, it isn't like, well, what's up with the attitude? It's just, I don't want that donut. I want the sandwich. Um, so d just try, I'm just bringing this because we were just talking and I just, it's just refreshing. To, uh, those of you from New York, up, up east, and you guys know what I mean. You're in line. You Someone cuts you. You say, hey, you're cutting the line, and that's it. There's no emotion, no anger. There's no tripping. You're not, you know, having a hissy fit. You just go, oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Great. Okay, get behind me. Thanks. Bye. You know, it's, there's no emotion. So I think a lot of you that love watching what I do is, is because of that. I'm just saying how it is. I'm not mad or angry. I don't. I don't take it home with me and uh, get mad. You know, like I, I mean, like if I'm voicing to someone I love, like, oh, what that the lady was so rude. But it's different than going. It's it's not a big deal. So try to bring that into your world a little bit. Just say, say it as it is. Uh, and that's my lesson for the day. So thanks for watching DD Core with my favorite groomer, and we're gonna get started with Sadie here. And she was a, this is our second groom together, but she's such such a sweetie. So here we go. I was up till like 1.30 last night in the morning uh, replying or uh, doing a lot of orders and building orders and building uh, emails for orders to give you guys an idea of what to buy. So I will try, I can't remember what I was writing about, but I'll try to hit some of the points of questions um, that came out from you guys today. And I just got to, you know, dig deep. But I think maybe when I start grooming, it'll come back to me. But I need to get moving because our next client is uh, coming in in about 47 minutes. All right, thanks. Okay, here we go. Okay, here we go. And I got a new SD card in there. We'll see if it'll hang out and do actually uphold the whole 15 minute situation for recording. And then I do have a new battery coming in. I actually had my blades sharpened recently as well. And I noticed the other day when I was grooming this dog, you'll see of the video, I was grooming a very aggressive dog and my tins were not going through it. So I feel like some of my blades were not sharpened correctly or I mixed them up and I couldn't tell which was which, okay? And so I got my tin and I'm gonna do a quick sanitary while I kind of decide what I wanna do. It's a very uh, tough area so I'm holding uh, her up here pretty good so that she doesn't sit on me while I'm up in her uh, private and uh, accidentally say nick that area so have a good hold don't let her be wobbling around while you're shaving her private areas it's a big deal okay there's a quite a bit of static since it's a very cold day today so I'm going to do just a tad this is a leave-in conditioner and one of my favorite bottles Got some bottles that I just absolutely love. So you're able to pick that up on the website on, the, on my online store. If you haven't noticed, we are building two online stores. Um, on my favoritegroomer.com, you'll see. And we're working on trying to have both products in both stores. But it's because uh, we want to get out of... See, I'm going up and down here. Okay, uh, I'm going to re revisit this for a second. There's a couple of you that have boy dogs. And you're wondering, like, what, how far up and down to go on the sanitary. Start right here under the chest. Right here's the chest bone. Just right there. Man, it doesn't matter. You can go all the whole chest if you want to. If they're peeing on each other, if they're peeing on their own hair, I really want you to clean that out. And it's real light with the 10. 
Make sure you know where their nipples are. Boys and girls, just check in there. Make sure so you don't go too far. But 10, that's all you need under there. Those of you that have a 10, great. But that's all you need. If you need one, let me know. Also, just like many of you are doing, you're emailing me for a kit order, like building you a specific order. If there's something you don't see, I can get it. Just give me an opportunity to get it for you. Um, and then those of you who are not ordering, just know I spend a lot of time building you these, these uh, emails and your support is very appreciated. But if you don't think you really want something, you're just kind of playing around with the idea, definitely let me know so I don't put it as a priority because I do stay up really late to accommodate, accommodate everybody. Okay, just know that. And that's the only way you can kind of give back to us uh, using our videos and learning. If you're using them every day, you know, I would totally, like you guys, some of you have been watching every single video, you know what I'm talking about. Give credit where credit's due. If you are learning from me, I would definitely buy from me. Okay, and the, and the best part of business is just ask what you want. And so I really want you to shop with me because that helps me offset all the time I've spent um, doing these videos for you guys to learn. That's all I ask. You know how like you're uh, you're doing a doing something, but you you don't. This is what I learned in one of my classes for business. You have to say what you want, people. If you want a Honda, say you want a Honda and go get a Honda. You know what I mean? If you if you say you want the hair short uh, and it's not, if uh, you know what I mean, just say what you want. Uh, no one can help you if we don't know what you want. And I I want you guys to order from me. When you need supplies, that would be my, my best wish right there. Okay, enough of that. We uh, did a 10, cleaned up the eyeballs and stuff there. I'm going to try to remind myself to use a scaredy cut on the face. I'm going to go ahead, and I've got all my blades and stuff over here because I am actually really, really, really trying to. I've got, look how many blades I've got. And one, I have one box that's uh, spare. So I have all these blades. You, this box is all 10s. That's how many 10s I have around. Excuse me, 10s and a few 40s. That's a lot of tens. It's my most common blade. I have every kind, ceramic, regular, titanium. Um, the regulars, see if I see a black, that's one of my first ones from grooming, 13 years ago, it still works. This one, the dark color ones, ceramic edge. So I, you, have, you need a lot of tens, that's your most common blade. I, would, you, I can't tell you how many tens you need in your work, but that's, I have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, ten blades there. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That tells you something. Seven, seven blades. One, two, three, fives, and maybe two, two fours. So it's not a lot, okay? Sorry, Sadie, I'm getting out of hand here. Not a lot of the ones of five and four that I don't even use, okay? So my tools are kind of all over the place. We're doing thorough cleaning on them uh, the yesterday or the day before. So I'm actually going to pull out my two guard, um, but right before I take this coat down, this might, I might bite myself in the butt, but here's our scaredy cut. The other day I tried to do a video and it didn't work on a Yorkie. She's moving around way too much. So um, she's real calm, right? It's a perfect situation to kind of show you how you should use this scaredy cut. So bring it through, trim. If you can bring your scaredy cut through, and they're static, just keep that in mind. If you can bring your scaredy cut through, you'll be able to cut the hair, okay? And there's too much static, man. Sorry about that. Okay, but you've got to really, st let's start over here. You know your dogs, if you know there's a bump there, be careful, but I mean. Okay. I would probably, um, I have a large one, but if you're at home, you can, you can get away with the large or the small. I'm not gonna do this cut because look at, uh, I work all day with dogs, so this is too much for me. But look at that, I am totally getting the haircut done. This is so cool, man. If there's a knot, you're not gonna be able to get through it. You've gotta have the coat brushed out. She came in with a brushed out coat already, and I'm about to run a guard through, but this is a, 
really great tool, man. Just, I just I love it. If you're at home and this is and you're grooming your own dog, this would be what I would get, okay? Because now I can flip out this guard, okay? Boom, I'm gonna go get a, a larger guard. Watch this. I'm gonna get a shorter, no, shorter, larger. Larger's not gonna take off any hair, okay? So I got a, a guard that'll leave the hair a little bit longer. So I'm gonna go this way, sorry. Push that there. Okay, and here we go. Let me see here, you guys can do this really good here. As long as you can run a comb through, okay? And the brush kits, I mean, you need about six tools and you're good to go. So, if you can run the comb through, then you're good off, right? So this is leaving the hair a little longer now, okay? Like up here. Is that not the coolest thing? Dude, please go order one. If you're, if you're grooming your own dogs at home um, and you're not sure how to do it, you can't go wrong with this one, okay? We're gonna come up to the head here. And I'm gonna try something different. I'm actually gonna come with the approach of coming this way at the face. The other dog I did the other way. You gotta still watch the ear flaps and stuff, okay? It's a little different. I mean, I've never used this tool like this extensively because I don't need to, I'm a groomer. I have all the other tools. But you guys out there watching my show, if you don't, you need a brush still, right? So definitely get yourself a brush. You want to, it's a lot of static, that's why. If it was a summertime, I don't think we'd be, you see all this static? <laughs> Look. <laughs> so I would probably come this way, watch. Come backwards and pushing that hair into your comb, right? It's going to be shorter than the guard because you're coming at a different angle with the hair. Okay, okay, no, no. You gotta hold that chin hair. And I know if David, David's at home today doing YouTube, but um, if you don't hold the chin hair, it, it can be, he can tell you firsthand, it'll be very dangerous in the face area, okay? Okay, clean all that out, take my guard off, whoop, whoop. If you get really good, let me say, hold the chin hair. You can, you know, do this number, okay? If you don't, check this out. I'm gonna come get a shorter guard. Let me see the wrong way here. Okay. And I'm gonna come. Eh, eh, eh. Come on now. How cool is that, you guys? This is so cool. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. I'm so excited. If I wasn't a groomer, this would definitely be so useful to me. Combing it back out. Is that not cool, you guys? Okay, so there's your scaredy cut. Um, order one on my website. You learned it from me. If you learned it from me, please go order it from me. Um, and now, let's get to work, baby. We're already at 13 minutes, and I really need a hustle bustle, okay? Okay, so let me get the tools off the table, and we're gonna come down quickly with our two guard from the neck down. If the hair's real staticky, again, you saw me do it early, brush it up so that you can get as much as you can. If you're gonna go over and over, so you're gonna need to go down to your four guard, okay? If you're gonna go over and over and over with the, the guard, you might as well just go shorter. So keep that in mind as you, uh, so you don't waste your time. The more you go over it, I mean, you're still getting hair. And it may just be better to go with a shorter blade, shorter guard, okay? And the guards are the blue thing. That's how I refer to those, okay? Snap-on comb or guard, I call them guards. The legs are going to be a tiny bit shorter, so I'm going to skip those for now. I'm just going to come around with my two. For the sake of time, I'm going to not bring the camera around right now. Got to move that loop out of the way. These loops are actually not on our website yet. We need to work on that. Um, they're my favorite loop. I can pinch and do this. I'll show you another loop later. They're so, 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 so cheap. They come with your tables and they are just, just cheap. They're hard to maneuver. 
And so every table I've gotten has, a, I have accumulated those loops. I've never used them. They are just crappy. You have to use two fingers sometimes, two hands to move them, you know, down the chin. And you can't really go wrong. The higher up on the neck you go, you can't go wrong, man. But you can go so low that you have to keep coming back down the, down the chin, okay? So go high up under that chin there. You can't hardly tell. And my tool of being over here is throwing me off. Okay, I'm coming to get my four. But I really want to find out which tools are, which of my blades is not working. Because that other day was just so, I was, this is my four down on the feet. Just goes straight down. I don't know where you guys are having issues with the feet. Just goes straight down there. There shouldn't be any bend or anything like that. Up under the armpit. Whoop, 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 hold on there. That means she's kind of pulling at me. So we got a four down here. You can't hardly tell, can you? See? Especially after the bath. And then it'll just pick up less debris on the ground out there. Especially out here in Texas, we got a lot of dry grass. So I need a model number and I just, so I can go ahead and look it up for you, okay? So one of the two, if you're gonna email me a bunch of questions, just try to help me save time a little bit because know there's like 30 or 40 other messages coming through. Uh, I would love to answer your questions and build your orders, so don't get me wrong, but uh, just know I need the detail, all the details up front. Otherwise, we're gonna go back and forth for like a, a two or three days or a week. Because there's a bunch of different clippers out there. Some have a, bl a blade like this silver blade that can and cannot come off. You know, so I need to know, can it, can yours come off or, or you're not going to be able to get these kinds of blades. I'm going to come in with my 10 and just clean out that armpit because it's slightly matted as I could tell when I was doing that arm. And she's being so good, isn't she? She's so, so sweet, man. Okay, we're going to come get a 40. Where do you guys want to be at here? Let me see. Some tiny, tiny dogs don't fit the dog up stand. And we are looking to do a toy up stand for the, especially one lady asked me about it. You know, she said, I have a toy breed. Um, so this one, she would work. She's a, right at the edge. I wouldn't leave her on there, but I'm able to just have her stand up and and help my hand not hold her up. So she's just a little bit on her tippy toes. The key is time, or the amount of time I have her standing up. So a lot of you are ordering the dog up stand and prepaying, that is what you, I would do. Um, uh, I don't even know what I'm about to say. We sold out pretty fast on the amount that we made last time. So this time we have the the order's coming in here in February. Just keep in mind, made in the USA is really, uh, I want to say, a much just a little slower process. It's in more detail, um, and we've got them here. It, it, it took uh, like a month and a half like, for the order to be made start to finish. And uh, so we were trying to keep it in-house in the USA, so that's, bear with us on that. We tweaked a few things, so the model will look just like the one I have here. But... You are going to love either stand that you get. That's my opinion. If you give it time and work with it and understand how to use a stand, you will use it on every single dog. As long as uh, the measurements work for you. If you're doing only toy breeds, you might not I mean, you might not be able to fit that pet. But go to Dog Up Stand. Make sure you read the measurements. Make sure you know about the stand, how to use it. I have a link on myfavoritegroomer.com that says read about the Dog Up Stand. And I've, I've made some notes about the best way to use it. Um, you cannot put it on a dog for a few hours. Use it on your highest, most, um, where you need it the most. And then let her just sit now, okay? So there's a way to use the stand. It's not meant to be for hours, okay? And, I, and a lot of you mass groomers, you get what I'm saying. I have, I've been on the phone with you and you're like, of course you wouldn't do that. Exactly, you would not do that. Go to dogupstand.com for that. You can't prepay yet until we're sold out of the larges uh, in style one. So once those style ones go away, you can prepay on the site. Otherwise, a lot of you have been uh, prepaying through my PayPal. 
So I appreciate y'all prepaying. Prepaying means you get yours first. I know how many we're gonna have. If you prepay, I, I if you prepay and we sell out on the prepay, then we or we will do another order. So prepay means uh, you email me and I send you the amount for the small dog up sand prepay with shipping and handling. So international rates are different, so those are have to be built online on email only. Um, you can check out dogupstand.com. You just won't be able to ever, ever order internationally because the shipping is just crazy on that site, on those sites. So just email me if you want international shipping. International shipping rates are listed on the website now under uh, the dog up stand. There's a link for shipping. Excuse me. So go to dogupstand.com. And if you want to prepay, email me. And that way you get yours first. Well, they will be done in February. We don't have an exact date. And if you have ever manufactured anything, that's kind of how it rolls. You might run into issues, tweaking. We might get a print and say, hey, we don't like it. So we want it done in February. But when you work with companies like that, there's no guarantee. You, it's like building a car. Well, it's supposed to come out on June 1st, but it might be June 16th. So when you're building something new, you want to make it right. So bear with us on that. That's how work, making things works. And um, I'm going to get her in the bath and then go from there. So here we go. Let's go to the bath together. Because I know a lot of you have been like, hey, I want to see the bath. Oh, I can't go to the bath, you guys. What am I doing? I got to do the ears because the ears are really matted. Okay. So I want to see what we're working. We're going to shorten ears anyway. So I'm going to see where the mats are. Okay. I have an idea. First thing I want to do is a tin inside the ear area so that I can um, kind of just expose what hair. Oh, we got an ear infection. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And it's pretty bad. Ooh. So I'm going to, oh, it's so bad, you guys. It's so, so bad. Oh, I'll get that. I'll show you in a minute. Let me clean this all up. Ear infections are going to be hard to work with anyway. Oh, it's smelly and it's yellow and pussy and stuff like that. It's definitely an ear, ear issue. I'm not a veterinarian. I do call this an infection, but I'm going to send them to the vet. If it's, uh, if it's just before where it's at now, I would have been able to maybe help them with malacetic otic, but it's just too far along for me to help. So I am going to pull the ear hair out because I've had veterinarians tell my clients, your groomer needs to pull the ear hair out because that's the groomer's job. And I get it and I'm gonna pull that ear hair out of there but I'm not gonna clean it. I'm going to let the veterinarian be able to see what they're working with. So now that I've shaved the inside of the ear, now I can see a little bit more better. I think these are five and a half, so they're my favorite. These are my, I always use these on the sh uh, uh, ears, okay? Five and a half straight point. So they're on, I think these are on my website. I think they're 40 something. So now, I'm not going to shave down the top of the ears, but I am going to take all this down to the leather. And we want it short anyway, but I think I'm just going to tell them, hey, this is going to, I'm going to try to make it short and cute. You're going to do some ear treatment and it's going to be all nasty and slimy anyway. So if it's the dog's ear hair is getting in the water bowl, plus there's an ear infection and they wanted short ears, this is what I'm going to do. Something kind of cute like this. Okay. And look at all that static, you guys. <laughs> Okay, it's so cute. And then shorten up the chin and stuff. When we get done, I think it'll be super duper cute. I call this the Duke face because Duke looked so cute. He was a Shih Tzu mix and he's gone now, but you can find him on my website. Uh, I had to say goodbye to him. It's been years now. I can't believe it's been that long, but I started doing the Duke ears because he had an ear infection one time. And I realized then when I shaved his ear so that I could always apply the infection, solutions without it being all nasty and caking up in his hair. I was like, wow, man, the ears this short make the ears move um, less weight. They're like, who's there? You know, they're like, it's so cute, you guys. Okay. Okay, so now I got my eight and a half. So these are my most common. I either have a green or blue handle. I don't, I don't dig the $300 shears because I am going to drop my shears and when I do, it is over. So why do that if I know I'm going to drop my shears? You're working with animals, not like humans. So it's not like the human is moving around. But you work with an animal, you are going to drop everything. So just, if you don't have doubles now and you're a groomer, doubles mean if you don't have, I'm okay with it being dull. Because uh, that way I can go fast and 
Anyways, I've just trained myself to be okay with a little bit of dull scissors. If you can see right there. You can't, you can go, you can go fast with a human, but the human is usually like, okay, I'm going to sit still, but th this animal isn't. So if you don't have doubles now in your groomer, save your money. You want two clippers. Look up there. I have, do I have them up there? Yeah, I have one. Okay. Let's see if you can see one old clipper up there, one old clipper up here, one new clipper over there, one new clipper over there. And that's for David's stuff and my stuff. So we always have, always have one old clipper it doesn't matter how old it, you know, it just is uh, you drop your clippers and you can't finish the grooms for that day, you have a backup plan. You can't go, oh, I can't finish your grooms, you know. Um, just be prepared. Oh, yeah, it's going to be cute, isn't it? Yeah. There's uh, sometimes um, fat here, skin flaps, and same thing up there. I've already, already said that before in other videos. If you're just getting to my channel, please go watch all the videos. Uh, do a binge. You're going to learn so much. If you don't watch every video, there's verbiage that you're not getting, okay? Even if you just have it on in the car and let it play, at least you can hear what I'm talking about. And I'm always mentioning something different in every video. <laughs> it's worth it. Okay. Now, let's look at these ears real fast. See how much I like just talking slows, slows down the whole process? Can you guys see? It's really hard to do this camera by myself, but can you guys see that ear infection in there? Yeah, I know you can see that. Ew, you guys, poor baby. Okay, I'm here, I might as well go ahead. I don't want, she might not like it. She's really sweet, but another dog might not like it. I'm just gonna pull and um, that tickle a little bit. And here's my pull pad for, and I've, all these are on my website. All right, can you see what I'm doing here? Okay, just pull this ear, and someone else, that's what it was. Someone was like, Didi, how do you pull the ear hair? Little by little, with your fingertips. In this case, I'm using my hemostats because I do, really don't want to touch her, the inside of her ear. I just want to get the ear hair out of the way for the veterinarian later. Okay? I'm so sorry, sweetie. I'm so, I'm, if it's infected like this, plus I'm pulling the ear hair, I need to get it out, though, because when the veterinarian uses his tools, he's going to want to see through... And the ear canal, you can see, is so tight already, okay? I've got a good hold on her head because I know it's not comfortable what I'm doing. But someone has to do it, okay? Here we go. Okay, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, baby. I'm so sorry. Okay, let's see here. And the it's, it's still, like, juicy, but I want to keep going fast. I don't want to be stopping, okay? So little by little, okay? Little by little is how you would do ear hair. If it, even if there's no infection, just little by little. I know someone was asking me about that last night. Little by little, little by little. Uh uh uh. There's a nice chunk there. Look at that, you guys. Oh, you can't hardly see. Camera's not big. Anyways, you see it, right? Okay. So I'm going to wash my tools here. Keep on, I'm going to keep these separate so I can make sure I clean them up real good before we. Finish up. I'll be right back. Okay, this is a bottle I just fill with water to fill up my diffuser out there. I have a you guys don't know, I never talk about it, but for the animals I have a lavender real doTERRA lavender peppermint, um, on guard to kill uh, bacteria, things like that. I'm not a doctor or anything like that, but this is what I use. I do believe in oils, helping the body. So if you're interested, the reason why you can see on guard on my online store is that's a one I use every day to prevent getting sick. I don't know if it can prevent it. I have to say that. I have to say that. But I haven't had the flu in over four years. Three, four years this year, if all the way through, I don't get the flu. And I haven't had the flu shot either. I felt like the flu shot was getting me sick. That's my opinion. I have nothing to do with the, it's the medical industry. I just, I prefer to use the oils to, just as a preventative. So I fill this up with water because I ran out this morning. So we use a diffuser. I have a diffuser out front. I have two diffusers at home. I sell them if you need a diffuser. So today we're diffusing peppermint and On Guard. in the front of the store.
So I'm getting the coat kind of wet everywhere, moving her around. She has stuff in her eyes, so I'm going to grab her chin here. Come here, baby. I'm just going to help myself get that stuff out of her eyes a little bit with regular water, which is not harmful at all. Okay. Okay, okay, come here. Get down the chin here. She's moving around quite a bit. Got a conditioner and that. I guess you put a pump in there. Um, okay, hold on here. Keep shaking off all the water. I need some of that water, girl. She already has ear, ear issues, so after this, we're going to possibly recommend doing uh, cotton balls in the ears to avoid water getting in the ears just to safeguard it later once the ear infection is gone. I've got shampoo I'm still trying to finish off from the other day here. Put Add some water so you can get all the shampoo out, okay? This stuff smells so good. This is my pet silk shampoo. Move all that around. There's quite a bit. Her hair's pretty thick too. I'm gonna do my conditioner now. A little bit more of shampoo down the legs here. Wash that butt really good. You don't like to get your fingers up in there like this? Then go get a towel. Always use the towel to help you wash good. Just don't, but don't do too heavy-handed on the towel. You don't want to hurt them back there. But you want all the clumps of poop and all that all gone. Okay? If you're scared to touch back there. Don't just skip it. Okay, good to go. Somebody was asking about a loss of also being brushed while it's wet. This is where I'm talking about brushing with the water going through. Brush the hair with the water going through and conditioner and shampoo for that matter. And you will see some major results when the dog is dry. It's so, so soft. And here, you want some water? You want that water to help you get through the coat, okay? You can't, so this is what I would do. I don't know about brushing my dog wet. I don't know who, uh, where you got that information from. She has a lasso and she said she read to brush her dog wet. This is how wet I would brush the dog. Anything, you can do that light mist of a uh, leave-in conditioner, which I mentioned to you, but if you do the light mist of conditioner and it's heavy mist and the soap of the, coat is wet, really wet, it's not going to go through very easy. It's going to be, you're going to be tugging and tugging and that's just not fun. So here uh, with a lot, with quite a bit of water, I'm going to brush the tail. If it's matted, it's not going to work for you. If you have a dog that's matted and you're doing this, it's going to be super painful and the dog's not going to like it. You should be rinsing your dog longer than you are lathering it because you're going to have this coat that you need very clean because a dry shampoo, which if you have long hair and I have left shampoo at the top of my head and that night I was like itching like crazy. I had to go rinse my head again. So it's the same thing I can imagine with an animal. If you leave some shampoo in the coat and they'll eventually be itching a lot. I had this one client, she was like, Dee Dee, my dog itches all the time. And I said, well, you know, all right, what kind of food is it on, stuff like that. And she gave me the list and everything. And I said, well, how are you, are you bathing your pet in between grooming? Yes, we bathe her like weekly. I said, well, how are you bathing the dog? Oh, we, we fill the bathtub with uh, water and shampoo and we, see how long I'm rinsing? You want to rinse really good. Um, you want to make sure it's all out. She said, we fill the tub with water, add shampoo, wash the dog like in the tub, like the, the stoppers in there, and then um, rinse the dog with the same water. Watch your ears now. And then the dog comes out. And I was like, dude, you're leaving all the shampoo in the coat, ma'am. And she's like, really? And I was like, yeah, you have to drain the tub and rinse uh, separately. And she's like, well, no wonder. Yeah, no wonder. So um, she's like, well, we never had a dog before, so we didn't know, you know? And I'm like, whoa, you're leaving so much soap in the coat. Come on now, stop moving. You wanna get your chin and stuff, come on now. 
You want to get the soap out, okay? There's no giving up here. You have to get the soap out of the coat. Uh -uh. Come on, Sadie. Come on, Sadie. I know. You're, this is not choking now, okay? I'm holding this, so. Woo! The reasoning should be easy, girl. Okay. Now, this is an opportunity when you're working by yourself, let her shake so she can get some of that drippy hair off and go sweep your table. Get your station ready. So I swept my station and that way if someone walks in, I mean I have curtains but I mean you can walk through the curtains, you can kind of see through the curtains. But if somebody walks in, uh, I'm going to dry her as best as I can, okay. I was going to take her to the table man, I'm like half out of it, okay. I'm going to blow dry her with her on video for you guys. Um, I love my Joe blow dryer. It's a $400 blow dryer, but there is, a, there is one on my website that I sell that is 260. 260 bucks is about what you pay, 260 or 70, and that includes shipping and handling. So if you want a dryer that's a pretty strong, uh, I know a couple of you have ordered it and you love it. So other, other folks that need the dryer, groomers, if you're not a groomer, you don't need this dryer, you would want, you could if you had a Husky. But uh, you don't need this dryer if you're not a groomer. You could use one of the orange ones that we have. We don't have those online. But if you need a dryer at home, a strong one, if you have a small dog, great. If you have a big dog, you want a bigger dryer. So let me know if you want that. I don't have a lot of dryers on the website. Just one that I know people love. I'm not here to, t to try to sell you a bunch of junk. I'm here to sell you exactly what you need. If you're out there just ordering, there's one lady, she's ordering on Amazon, she's ordering on eBay, she's, that's great and all, but if you're ordering a bunch of stuff you don't need, you're wasting time. You'll get that product, you'll send it back, you're, just call me or email me and be serious and uh, know what you have, give me an inventory list and uh, I'll tell you what you're missing and I'll also probably advise you, hey, resell that. If you're in the dog world, it'll be easy. Someone in your salon, someone that you know, someone on a Facebook page that you know in uh, grooming will pick up your stuff, especially if they're a starter groomer. I don't like to have a bunch of stuff I don't use, okay? If it's sitting there, I'm selling it. If you sell it, if you've used it and you sell it for just half the profit or whatever, you know, half the money, then it's not a loss. You tried it and you didn't, like, you know, lose all your money, okay? Let someone else try it for half the cost, right? Okay, here we go. Excuse me. Okay, let's go out here, you guys. You know, I'll put you guys right here. Maybe right here. So it's not bone dry, but I'm still gonna actually add a little bit of my leave-in conditioner. Just a tiny bit wet. Hair gets tiny bit tangled depending on how you blow dry, but you can see, wow, like maybe three, five minute blow dry. Not, not slow, okay? And I was not just standing there letting the hair blow. I was moving the hair, pushing it, pulling it, you know, and moving it back and forth so it'll dry fast with my hands helping, okay, guiding the air. Hold it, 
and brush it against yourself or the table. If it's, if it's more knotted, then use the table and kind of hold it so it's not so painful, just like you would like a child when you're brushing their hair, kind of in your hand so they don't feel all the blunt end of the, you know, the brush. She's doing great for that ear infection too, right you guys? Some dogs you've seen, if I have an ear, if they have an ear infection, boy, man, they're moving crazy and acting all mean over here. She did amazing. So I hope she continues this attitude through in her entire life. You've seen the black and white Shih Tzus that are older, man, they become aggressive. Every one of them so far. I've always got this tight squeeze, no matter what I've done with my table situation. Okay, back at our two guard with a ten. I don't have, I think I have one 30 and I would sell it. Like I don't use a 30 at all. I don't use a 15 at all. 10 is my number. You don't need a 15, you don't need a 30. To me, they don't do anything. I don't like them. They don't, just, just, like, just use a 10 or a uh, 10 or what is it? 40. Mailman, I got some postcards up there for you. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Thanks for coming in. Say again? You know we're not open on Monday. I don't know, man. It's hit or miss. We're, we're working. We just might be mobile. Oh, okay. But thank you, sweetie. All right, then. You Bye. Bye. You got to love your mailman people, man. Okay. I, I know the feeling. I used to work at the post office. Y'all just don't know. I've worked everywhere. <laughs> and my dad uh, retired with the post office, um, medically retired with the post office. So I, I, I very much understand... Um, how it is to be working the post office. So you gotta love your mailman, love your mailman peoples, your mail women. It's not uh, easy. Nothing's easy. Every you should just picture yourself um, in someone else's shoes. It's really hard to do. So I'm still got my two. And you notice uh, in the tub she's moving around a lot. Yeah, it makes it really tough, you know, to get your job done when you've got the dog doing circles. She's really, really sweet, but in the tub, she was definitely doing some circles while we were blow drying. I don't blame her. I probably don't like the blow dryer either, but you can see moving and moving and moving. If you do that with every dog, and you do eight dogs a day, it's a lot of work on your arms and your wrists and your body. So that's why some of the tools you see and you want to use is because it should be helping your, helping your body a little bit. So we did a two guard now. I'm seeing some areas. If you see some areas, it's not. If you don't do a heavy handed, you'll be able to just clean it up. I got my four now because I'm coming down all the feet again. As flurry as this is, you can hand scissor. Maybe even come back with a five guard, the red one. She is moving. She's like a little bit not liking a little bit of stuff. Coming down here with my four. Do your job but watch your sanitary. I was like, I thought that was the other claim. I was like, dang, man, I was so close to being done. <laughs> See, this is a good hole, but usually I'm doing aggressive dogs. It would totally bite my, bite my hand there. So just for the sake, here's a five guard. It's very little guards on there. You can come down and instead of hand scissoring, just bring your five guards straight down. If you're heavy handed, then you are maybe setting a line. So don't push so hard. Let that just glide through the hair, okay? Notice she's like, I'll pick up her foot. She sits, I'll pick up her foot. That's kind of what I call a little argument. She's doing the opposite of what I want to do. If she just stood there, man, it would just even go faster. Can you imagine? 
Okay, so that was just showing you how to use a four, excuse me, five guard on a ten. And I had a lady come in and she bought a guard. And let me show you this guard. Okay, this guard has these little teeth. They're little tiny ones. They go like this. They sit here on your clippers. If you have these types of clippers where you can take the whole blade off, okay? You take the blade off. If you're not gentle with this little piece of metal right here, if you go one, two, three, it's going to break off and you have to throw it away. Have I learned that? Yes. It was a waste of my money. I was pissed. Lay your guard right here, push down and in, okay? Sometimes these, uh, these guys are made cheap, so you're going to have to like uh, 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 get it right. Make sure it's set on there. Both sides are in line, okay? Pu push, push here and here. Here and here. Okay? So lay it there. Push down. And pressure on your thumb. Press down into your, into your palm and let it sit in there. Okay, that's your best way. If you don't do it right, you're going to go like this. Uh, don't ever do that. It just, just lay it there. You make sure it's centered. Just lay it there. Don't be doing all this junk right there. You're going to bend those up. You can bend them back about once. Two or three, it's going to come off. Okay? There you go. That's just how you put the guard on. See, if you don't watch this video, you're not going to get that because I've never showed you guys that before. All right, now we're going to do our... Go back to the two guard. Should I do the two guard, you guys? I kind of went short. I'm going to do a four guard, which I had, which is purple. And we're going to go back words like this. Down the ears a little bit. Um, hold the ear up so you can get the side of the face straight down. Hold the ear up, side of the face straight down. And here, if you want to come down with the four, you can do that or come back and just hand scissor. And let's see how they like that, okay? Then my hand scissor a little bit and then we are done. I'm gonna check the tail. brush it down and you guys might be just looking at her face but I'm just going to trim up and away what it looks like it would be in her when she uses the bathroom what might be in the way and then up a little bit more there my dog up stand here while I go back and do all of her feet so she'll stay up for me okay. I'm gonna start over here brush it down matter of fact let me back up I didn't do the nails yet so let's do the nails because I saw how long they were during the so I got her held up so that's great do our nail to they were severely long which means they're curved and, and really out there so now I'm gonna do the nails that way I can take as much off and the hair is in my way, you know what I mean? The nail's not in my way. Don't forget your dew claws. Sometimes the back ones have a dew claw too. Remember Cotton, the Maltese? He was missing like four nails on one, but he had a one random nail that was in there. It actually took a time, one time to grow one groom, but the next time he came out, it, it was like, uh, had grown out. It was a, grown out of the pocket of skin that was deformed, okay? So I don't mean like it was skipped or whatever. I mean it was grown out. Because it wasn't growing. He was a pu too much of a puppy, you know? Now, get your eight and halves. And your, I like this, uh, this tiny brush that I always say is just to shape the feet. Just to move the hair around the feet. And so when I bought these, I was like, oh, what a waste of money. But I use it every day, you know. It's just not something I would brush with. 
if you got a brush like you want angled bristles but these bristles are so thin look they're so floppy it's just going to shape the hair it's not going to brush for me at all it's not going to do any real brushing i can just move it around but i use it every day i have this one or a black one goodness for this stand you guys have no idea man my whole career I wish I had a stand my whole career and I just dreamt and dreamt and dreamt and dreamt until I was like I need to make this happen can someone help me and my brother-in-law made the day he really helped me to make it come alive there are other products we are drumming up so just wait man it's gonna be so cool things that make our life just so easy so much easier just little stuff You're going to see a lot of the things I, I've uh, needed. I have figured out a way to use, you know, other products in, in, in different industries to use here. So um, in, be innovative in your thoughts when you're needing something that you might have something that could do the job, at least temporary. dog upstand is in your way move it later I'm just gonna finish off what I need to w with it and then come back without it and do the rest of what I need to without it okay like right here around the tummy obviously the skin's moved because there's a platform under there so don't trim under there until you've moved it you really know what you're working with okay think smart got her leg hiked up so it's kind of cute I think those are kind of some cute moves okay so we'll check that <laughs> so silly what are you doing man are you resting your leg back there I have yet to have used a dog upstand where a dog is like yelping you know she was waiting for her she was waiting for her move which is fine because we're done with the legs yeah I have yet uh, in over a year of a year and a half or maybe even two years now using the dog upstand in product mode like demo mode just making sure it was going to work and it, it was successful you know of using it and I have yet have ever used it on a dog that yelped so there was one person that told me that she did and I'm like what if, you know I, I, I told her I need a recording so if you're really making that happen I don't believe it but I need to see it it could it, you're doing something wrong so the dog shouldn't be yelping okay something else is going on there i don't know what but um show me and i will guide you through proper usage of the dog upstand okay let's see here can you she doesn't want to look you, you see how arguing with me don't argue man don't you got food up in there i don't even know what that is man I'm going to clean the ear that doesn't look bad. But I'm going to not touch, and I mean, the sense of cleaning. I've already pulled the ear hair out so the vet can see. I need to revisit some ear hair here, but this one wasn't like the other one. I'm still using my eight and a half because I'm just here, and I've basically done all the trimming already. But I'm just trying to capture a couple things. The reason why I hate using the eight and a half, or I don't suggest it, is that if you're using it around the ears, you could literally be doing this and accidentally cut what... It's so long, the, the shear is so long. If you have to look all the way up and down as you're cutting to see what are you adding to the, the cut. Down here, hair down here, you know, what are you adding to the cut? So around the face, this is okay. But around the ears, you usually want to have your, the, my short, the other ones that are short. The short straight on the ears, you know. Inverted V, as you all know. If you do the same thing over and over, you'll get fast. 
If you always do something different, you will get you will stay slow. If you always move, you know, put your keys, if you put your keys somewhere new every time, you'll always be looking for them. If you make sure to st do, you get home, you put your keys in one place, you get you put your stuff in one place all the time. You'll be able to get up and go, get up and go. If you are always looking for your stuff, it's because you need have to create some habits, uh, not all, some habits. Don't drive to, to don't drive to work the same way every day and do the exact same routine. Cuz someone that will learn that will then know exactly what you do every day. There's some I learned that in the military. So there are some habits that you create and some that you don't want to create. In grooming, to be faster, you're going to want to do the same moves. Okay, um, there's some knots under her under her tummy right there on her leg, so I'm going to take my tin now. I'll go ahead and move the dog up stand since we don't really need that for the rest of this groom. I'm going to bring her up. Use the same word. Up, up. Good. I'm going to just clean that out with my tin straight down the leg there. Then the over here. Open that joint straight down. We've already done the tummy, so that's looking really nice and clean. I would go as far up as like up here. I mean, come up here and clean it all out. It's fine. If you've got a dog peeing on himself, do that, man. That's gross, you know what I mean? And urine, man. Ooh, strong. It's got ammonia in it. Okay. I think you should have alcohol peroxide always kind of right by your station. So, like, right now I'm able to go ahead and uh, clean, the, clean these uh, hemostats. And I also think you should have some neosporin or some kind of ointment treatment. If you cut yourself, immediately put it, you know, clean with uh, alcohol, immediately clean right there and apply your neosporin. Uh, I've cut myself probably six to eight times in, in 13, 14 years. So neosporin, dude. I'm about to see if I can carry it. <laughs> I'm going to ask the company if I can carry it in my store. Where's my pad? I'm going to get a different pad because I, I didn't have time yet to wash that one, so. So uh, if you're just at home, you can try your fingertips only. Look at how small her ear is, so that would be just hard. If you're doing it at home, you need to go slow. And I don't recommend the locking hemostats. I recommend these that I can just move like scissors. That way, if I accidentally easily grab these little flaps in here without paying attention, or it's dark, it's hard to see in there. So I kind of grab what I can see. And if I can't see it, I just put it in there and kind of lightly grab and just pull a little hair. So there's not a lot, but that way you can get everything out of the ear without locking down on anything. If you lock down on skin, I think I've told you this before, it's gonna, it's not gonna be, it's not gonna feel pleasant. So after today, the I think my station will be better, better off. And then like in a week or two, we're going to change the station. We're going to move our stations to that wall. So it's going to be pretty interesting. I think we're going to move it to that wall. We'll see what happens. All right. She's looking great. Let me do a little bit of leave-in. Sorry. Apple pie a la mode. I'm going to check her face real fast. Because I see some flurry stuff. Some flurries. You got some flurries? Just looking at it, she does not want me in there. At least you're letting me get there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, so cute, right? So cute. You're so cute, yeah. You're so cute. I'm gonna tighten this up a little bit so you can kind of look at her head more. I've got my bubble tip now. There's a few things you need, but just a few, right? It's crazy, man. You don't need a lot of stuff. The right tools can get you far, man. I was like, oh, forgot my shears altogether. I had to make do. You could do everything that I'm doing with clippers as well. Okay, one last thing. I have my straights over here. Let me see, I have two. I swear I put my straights over here, yep. I put my straights over here, have my name on it. I've had these ever since my first 
grooming kit like since 2013. I rarely use these. I told the lady I would do, uh, my client hasn't walked in so I've got some time. Um, I would tell you a little bit about this straight, okay? The straight shear, you should have one straight shear. I honestly would sell this. I sell anything I'm using. If you need it, I can always get it replaced. Uh, worked with one lady, or maybe it was a teacher, I can't remember now. But she said, which is true, if you, if you want to just, if I put down my curve shears and dropped them, I would use this straight and I would do everything I did with the straight that I did with the curve, okay? Um, you need to know how to use a straight and you should be able to do everything you do with the curve with your straight. But my favorite, which I have too, is eight and a half curved shears, okay? So I should be able to do, I should be able to take a straight and come straight here, but also create this angle down this way, coming this way or this way. Not, it doesn't all have to be straight lines, okay? So if you're trying to, if I were to cut a circle out with this, you would go straight, 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 straight with an edge until you got that circle. Okay, I don't know if that makes sense to you. If it doesn't, I'll do a diagram. Be right with you. Um, but you should be able to do everything with your straight shear. Okay, so those of you that know that, I, you get it. But if you don't, the straight shear is good to have. I don't use it usually, but um, these are your straights. And that's the kind of tips I want to tell that one lady. So yeah, got to, uh, she order, she's ordering some straights. All right, here we go. We're done. Let me take an after picture and we're out of here. Thanks for watching DD Croy with My Favorite Groomer on YouTube and we'll see you later. And this is Sadie and she came out looking really sweet, huh? Really sweet. Who's at the front door? Is that your pickup? I don't think so. I don't think so, girl. I don't think so. <laughs> All right, thanks for supporting me. Thanks for your uh, GoFundMe contributions for the military service dogs. And thanks for ordering supplies from me. Let me know if you need anything. Email me. Check my website, myfavoritegroomer.com. Thank you. She's so excited. Are you so excited? You can go see mom. We're on video, mom. Hi. Hey. 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 Are you happy? <laughs> yeah. Hi. Hey. She did so great. Good. She did so She's great. Say hi. Say bye. Are you happy? Yes. Yay! <laughs> so happy. Are you so happy?